to episode 15 of Talent Hub TV. I'm here with Matthew Sutton today from Resonant. Thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. So we've got lots of different things to discuss today. I think there's some really uh, good topics that we'll go through, but um, for, for the benefit of the viewers, um, what did you do before Salesforce? So before uh, starting Resonant, I was in recruitment for about 15 years. One of us. One of you. Absolutely. A good 15 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So what then eventually brought you into the, the Salesforce ecosystem? Uh, so I got the opportunity to uh, play with Salesforce within the company I was working in at the time. Sure. Uh, and like a lot of people, found a new skill, my inner geek, yeah. my outer geek, <laughs> uh, and changed career. Okay. So had you had, uh, like, you call yourself a, a geek, but did you have an IT background at all or a passion for, for technology aside from outside of work? Uh, IT activity? Um, that's a different story. That started at university. Okay. On an engineering degree. Oh, okay, cool. And finishing not on engineer, not on an engineering degree. Yeah. Okay. And cool. moving into sales. Yeah, yeah. So um, sales and then your company implemented Salesforce, you got a chance to play around with it. Yeah. Um, what was your kind of, how extensive at that point did you play around with it? So I got us onto the global trial for um, cloud flows. Okay. Uh, so that was 2015. Yeah. And managed to start re-engineering workflows and processes using cloud flows. Sure. So it's pretty intense. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then since then, um, since you, your company implemented Salesforce, what roles have you played with the platform? So from moving on for then, I moved into a contractor, uh, Salesforce admin, mm -hmm. um, and then. Basically started working with multiple clients and, and grew resident from there. Okay, and and back uh, 2015, was Trailhead around or was that just come? So how how do you learn at that point? Like how do you get familiar with the system? So just Google and YouTube, I think, and then you know studying um, different different materials available. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it through Google. Okay, yeah, Trailhead's made a, being made a big, big difference. Yeah, yeah, sure. And were there any? Um, particular sources back then that were like that, that you would pinpoint and say that was a, a really big help along the journey? Yeah, SFDC 99. Yeah, yeah, okay, the guy in uh, in the States. Yeah, so. yeah, that's a good, that was a great, great help. Okay, and then uh, when you moved into the contract market, what, what were you, so BA, admin, what, what kind of uh, roles were you performing? A bit of everything. Yeah, so business analysis, project management, and hands-on uh, admin. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I don't really do is code. Okay, and at that point, were they like implementations or um, or support like day to day implementations? Yeah, so we've done about one hundred and fifty implementations today. Yeah, okay, yeah. and that's that's uh, obviously now moving into the, the moving away from the contracting. And it was a very quick move. Okay, yeah, from contracting into consulting. You saw the opportunity. Yeah, it happened. It kind of came about on its own, I guess, through uh, people I know recommendations. Sure. Lots of people to thank for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what's the uh, what's the, the big focus for you now, um, as as stands? Um, so we we've, we've launched our first product in the App Exchange about five weeks ago. Um, so that's actually going to change the the way the business is operating. So purely from being an implementation partner, we're now an ISV partner. Okay. Um, it's a, it's going to complement both sides, I think, of the business. Um, so I think we'll see future growth, um, most definitely. We, we've got our team in Manila, um, we've got our team in India, and we've got our local team in Australia and New Zealand. Sure. So we'll see growth in the world. Okay. So if we focus on um, the beginning of Resonant Cloud, and um, we'll, we'll discuss the product and the App Exchange experience, um, but, but initially looking at that consulting piece. Mm. Um, I initially came across the business because I, um, the, I I saw that you were looking for, for people coming from a non Salesforce background yep. and, um, and, and kind of cross training. So why was that your, um, I guess, route to, to, to growth, but also how, how did you do that? So there's a definite, uh, you know, skill shortage within the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, but from my days in recruitment, I'm also aware that there's a huge, um, source of skills within the sort of working parents model. Yeah. So people who are looking to uh, gain flexible uh, work, so on a project basis, um, maybe you know 20 to 25 hours a week, maybe less. Sure. Time going up during school holidays or down during school holidays. Yeah. Um, the, and so it's capturing that source 
uh, or skills, mm -hmm. and then um, giving people opportunity to learn the Salesforce platform at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And and how difficult? Because like one of my frustrations is that people aren't willing to do that. You know, aren't willing to give people the, the platform to learn and grow. So what would be an example of who you hired, um, their background, and and how they make that transition? So hiring really strong business analysts who can work with our customers and understand the actual customer requirements. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally around the understanding of business process. Yeah. Um, those people are then able to bring that uh, definition back into the house sure. where we've got our Salesforce expertise. Yeah. Um, and from there we can actually d design a system. Okay. By doing that, that person learns how the system is applied to the business case. Sure. Um, can see what's the power of Salesforce and how it can operate and then learns from that side and yeah. starts getting their hands dirty with some admin um, and upskilling. Sure. And what's the um, what's the good and bad from, from um, the duration it can and has taken from someone to go from a you know a, a business or systems analyst with no Salesforce experience to then being comfortable in a hands-on role? I don't think it's any bad. Um, I think it just depends on the person. Uh, and uh, different people have different aptitude for picking up a new system. Sure. But it's such an intuitive way of um, building and configuring Salesforce. It doesn't take long at all. Um, there are the, the fun and games of security settings and profiles and trying to get your head around uh, who sees what. Yeah. Um, that's the piece that can take the longest. I okay. Guess. But I don't, I don't think it matters. It takes all. It's just about gaining the experience and working through it. Sure. So, like a good example of someone that's that's gone through that process. Are we talking like months until they're comfortable in a hands-on role, or, or shorter, longer? I think it's. I mean, within a, within days, you can be adding fields, configuring page layouts, yeah, and adding a sales process. Sure. So if that's if that's the kind of the taking of understanding of business sales cycle. And converting that into a sales process, and then data capture points of just what fields need to be on a page layout. Yeah, really, that's done in you know a week or something. And then moving to the more challenging kind of security settings, and just building from there. Just yeah. build. It just it just a, it's a a never ending circle of learning. Sure. Salesforce are always releasing something new, so there's always something new to learn. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, you mentioned about uh, flexible working. Yeah. Um, what, what challenges, because uh, it's obviously worked for you, but what are the main challenges with that? Trust. Yeah. You know, I, we, uh, we work with a team of people who want to work, want to learn, want to uh, provide good outcomes for our customers. And as long as that's everyone's goal, then I think it works. So that, that, I guess that comes back to the initial interview and uh, I guess setting the expectations. Yes. And also, um, the um, experience I got from recruitment means actually I probably don't spend as much time into the as you would think. Sure, sure. But but I guess people know from the outset, well, look, I'm being given this opportunity and trust is a key factor. I think it, uh, that's exactly it. There's, there is a section of society of you know, people who, are, who want to work. And if you engage with those people correctly, you know you're going to get the outcomes that you're looking for. Yeah, sure. Why do you think more companies aren't? Because we really struggle with it. Like we, we struggle with someone that can't work from an office five days a week, just finding them the right opportunity because companies just don't seem willing to, to kind of adopt that, that, that way of working. Uh, I don't think companies are open to taking that risk. You know, it's a, it's a conversation that when it was just me, that kind of we, I needed to get some help on board and it grew and we found people who trust yeah. and grow from there. And sure. I don't think bigger organizations are open to that conversation and thought process. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone wants to be. Yeah, yeah. But actually doing it is a different matter. Sure. Um, you know, the idea of not having an office and working remotely 24-7 um, is, is, is different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What tools make it a lot easier? Salesforce. Yeah, but, um... <laughs> yeah so we, we use Salesforce with um, Google Suite. So we use Google Hangouts, and then we've got GoToMeeting, Zoom logins. So we've got a, an array of different uh, video conferencing tools. Sure. Um, and all around, because you never know which one we're going to work on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then G Suite. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you, you, when we, we've caught up in the past, you mentioned one thing to me around um, one key aspect is parents don't miss anything that happens at their, their child's school. Yeah, that's my first and own rule. There's no difference between going to meet um, a different client for a project and going to meet, going to school. So just put it in the diary and go to school. Yeah. And um, that's obviously, that's across the business, that's a culture thing, right? People um, like know that that's something they can do. Um, I hope so. <laughs> well, yeah, you would hope so. But is it because you perhaps, do you focus on the hours that people are working or is it like this is the outcome that we expect, therefore you do it when it works for you? It's all, it's all about the outcome um, and the experience. You know, yeah, we look at the, the time that we're spending for projects, you know, naturally, but yeah. really it's about outcomes. Okay. So what do, you, um, what do you truly believe the future of work is going to look like? I think there's, there's going to be a, a growing amount of uh, flexibility that's offered to um, the right people with the right set of skills. Um, I don't see it's going to change you know, drastically. We're always going to have CBDs, we're always going to have city centres yeah. and hubs of where people go to work. Sure. But I think that the flexibility uh, on offer is growing. I read a, an article the other day on LinkedIn of somebody posting about what it's going to be like in 20 years. And I actually just described my, my company. Really? So I did message back saying <laughs> it's not 20 years away. It's actually yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah, and I think there obviously there are pockets of companies that, that are doing it, but um, but yeah, on the whole, um, people are just hesitant, and um, and hopefully that will will change soon. Yeah, the, the debate seems to be around the uh, the newer generation, the younger generations, and how they're going to work. But actually, you know, as everyone goes through their career life cycle, it's actually a stage in the career where people want to work. Yeah. And want need the opportunity to work, and I think that's actually where it is. Sure, it's not necessary at the beginning of a career when you actually want to be in an office. Yeah, yeah, you need true. to be in an office. So yeah. it's actually kind of a mid to late career. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, you mentioned the App Exchange product. So yep. um, I think a lot of people will be interested in that because a lot of people that we speak to um, either want to set up their own consulting company or they're interested in building a product. Uh, you've done both. Um, yes. So. What have you learned through that product uh, experience and, and getting things on the app exchange? It's taken a, it took a, a lot longer than expected. Um, you never know where the next um, challenge is going to be to sure. overcome or the next change and the next roadblock. Yeah. Um, the, I don't spend enough time reading documentation on how to get through certain stages, if I'm honest. So, Probably should have done a lot more research beforehand. Sure. Uh, to 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 get ready for stuff. Yeah. And um, like end to end, how long has the process taken? Um, probably around eighteen months. What would you have done differently now? Um, with it taking eighteen months, is there anything that you feel you could have done better at the start so it wouldn't have taken it so long, or was it just that's how long the process takes for the app exchange? Well, I think the if I'd read the paperwork better, then I probably would have actually submitted a first draft of the product sooner. Okay. Rather than actually developing the product so we thought it was ready and then submitting and waiting for security review to come through. Sure. We could have actually had um, a more streamlined version of the product to have that initial concept in and tested. Mm -hmm. I think it was the initial having the the concept of the product. Um, go through its review, as well as the security review around the actual technical side of the product. Sure. That added, added quite a lot of extra time to it. Okay. Okay, cool. And uh, had building a product been something you always wanted to do, or is it just you saw an opportunity and, and went for it? I think I've always wanted to have the product. Um, there was, there's been, I think this is probably the third or fourth product I've been involved in. Okay. Over my time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is the this is the one of actually getting to market. Okay, and what what's uh, what's most exciting about the the future of this product for you? Um, I think I I think our products actually solved a problem that other people haven't managed to to solve, um, of how we can apply Salesforce to the recruitment industry. Um, we we've come at it from a from a totally different angle. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we're using core Salesforce products, um, which makes a big difference to the outcome. Sure. Okay. And um, from the broader Salesforce ecosystem, um, what what really excites you about the kind of next twelve months? I just think it's the the number of um, options we have now to connect with other systems. Um, by having our products embedded purely within Sales Cloud, means that virtually every product in the, in the App Exchange, you know, is capable of talking to core Salesforce objects. Yeah. So it it makes life so much easier to have plug and play. Sure. Um, and there's there's features in there with with products that we can really start generating new outcomes for customers mm -hmm. and a new customer experience for our customers. Sure. So within the recruitment industry, do you see any of the broader Salesforce products and features that are really that, that you don't need to build? They're already out there in the app exchange that can play nicely with your system. Like, is there anything out there that you think recruiters perhaps should be thinking about that they're not? I think so. We've got um, all the marketing suites, so part of Marketing Cloud, Social Studio, yeah. um, all of those pieces will be ready on how we actually engage with the market. Sure. Um, communities, Salesforce communities for opening up um, the interactive experience for yeah. your candidate base. Uh, analytics, all the analytics tools we've actually worked straight in, um, within the system as well. And Tableau now. Uh, and Tableau now, which uh, is the new one. Yeah, actually, you've got to go and do some reading on up on that. Sure. Um, so it's a, it generally yeah, it's fully open. Okay. The ecosystem is fully open. So actually, realizing the benefit of running a recruitment system on a platform um, without limitations. Sure. And um, just as a final piece, if you were to give one piece of piece of advice to a company considering a remote workforce, what would it be? Um, just do it. Yeah, the I think the overcoming that fear of uh, having to micromanage people and oh, is it really happening? Just focus on the outcome. Look at what the work that actually gets produced and stop worrying about how it gets produced. Sure. Um, I think that's both. Okay, great. And if anyone wants to reach out to you to talk about your experience around uh, building a product, uh, running a consulting business, having a remote workforce, I think there's lots of topics that will be of interest. So how should people contact you? What's the best bet? LinkedIn is the easiest. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you.